kuburu kwa nafasi ingine ya kuwa mbele zako naomba kwamba utatubariki naomba kwamba utatuhurumia naomba kwamba utanena nasi naomba kwamba utatujulisha njia zako mapenzi yako ya Mungu ili katika kuzizingatia tupate baraka na uzima bariki mtumishi wako anaposhiriki neno lako kwetu afanye baraka katika maisha yetu kwa jina la Yesu bwana wetu tunaomba tukiamini na tuseme amen we welcome every one of you who is watching us from near and far uh, we thank you that you are with us and may the lord bless you for joining us Wherever this broadcast is reaching, we speak blessings. And without any further delay, I want to welcome the speaker of the word this afternoon, our brother, Pastor Alex. Asante uh, sana Bishop. Asante sana pia waimbaji na wacheza vyombo. Mungu wetu wabariki sana. Asante sana kila mmoja kwa kushiriki katika ibada. Mungu wetu wabariki na watendee mema. Ah, uh, ni siku njema ambayo Mungu wetu ametupa. Tunaamini ya kwamba ako na baraka sababu ya maisha yetu. Na popote ulipo unganika pamoja nasi ili tukaendelee kubarikiwa pamoja hasa wakati tunapo lishiriki neno la Mungu. Uh, majina yangu vile askofu ameitaja ni Pastor Alex Kaloki na tunakuja kutoka uh, kanisa la International Gospel Axe Church Uthiru Nairobi Kenya. Hivyo popote pale ulipo uh, uwe huru kushiriki pamoja nasi na Mungu wetu akubariki. Sasa tu kaweze kulishiriki neno la Mungu kutoka wa kitabu cha Zaburi Zaburi sura yake ya 117 Psalm chapter 117 It's a very short psalm it has two verses and I believe that uh, God will bless us in this in Jesus name and so we read uh, Psalm 117 verses 1 and 2 uh, praise the Lord all nations extol him all peoples all you peoples for great is his love towards us and the faithfulness of the lord endures forever praise the lord allow me to read it again praise the lord all you nations extol him all you peoples for great is his love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you because of this opportunity that you've given us that we may share your word. We pray that you bless it in our lives, in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds, in our families, in the church, in the community, in the nation and in the world as at large. As your servant standing on this altar, Lord, I ask of your blessings. I ask of your favor, I ask of your anointing, and of your wisdom, Lord, even as I share this word, I pray that you will speak through me to the glory and to the honor of your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Uh, the word of God in the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 117, where we've read, uh, this is termed as one of the shortest uh, uh, shortest is actually the shortest of the Psalms and it's also the shortest uh, chapter in the Bible but it is very rich it's very strong as little it is it has a big message as short as it is it is full of uh, passion and uh, this passion, we find it, and actually the whole message in this chapter is about praising the Lord. It is opening with praise the Lord, 
it is closing with praise the Lord. And this one brings us to a great exp uh, expression of a great truth. The truth that is found in praising the Lord. And uh, there, in praising the Lord, there is great implication, there is great impact, uh, regardless of wherever you are or whoever you are, there is that impact. When you praise the Lord, there is great implication, there is great impact. And this is what we are going through today about praising the Lord. What is the impact? What is the implication in praising the Lord? No matter the generation, no matter the race, no matter the tribe, no matter the place where you are in, you are called to praise the Lord. So this chapter has a unifying factor for all the peoples, for all the peoples, whoever you are and wherever you are. You have a mission. You have an obligation to praise the Lord. And uh, just to sum it up, it is a psalm of praise. Recalling the provision of God's covenant, running, away, uh, running all through from Abraham all the way to Israel, all the way to Jesus, and all the way to us. Even today, we are partakers of this great covenant, the covenant that uh, God gave to Abraham. And because we fall in that lineage, today we are partakers of the same. And because of this, we are called to praise the Lord, we are called to honor the Lord, we are called to glorify the Lord. And uh, when we go through the Bible, especially the book of Psalm, there are six Psalms that are similar to this. They end with praise the Lord. And uh, ending or starting with praising the Lord and ending the Lord, it shows an opening and a closing. Telling us that when you wake up in the morning, you open the day with, with praising the Lord. And in the evening, you remember to praise the Lord. At the beginning of the week, you praise the Lord. At the end of the week, you praise the Lord. At the beginning of the month, you praise the Lord. At the end of the month, you praise the Lord. Still, at the beginning of the year, you praise the Lord. And at the end of the year, you praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that God dwells in the praises of his people. So when you open your day with praising the Lord, you invite the presence of God to dwell with you. Inviting the presence of God. Calling upon the presence of God to dwell with you. And in this, there is power when you praise the Lord. There is that energy. There is that strength. There is that, um, uh, that tenacity that comes with praising the Lord. It is when you praise the Lord uh, from a lowly state you become energized and you feel strong. You feel empowered and you feel em em encouraged to rise up, to walk again and to be able to do an extra duty in your life. This is the power that we are called to. Take note of this. Praise the Lord, all you nations. So this praising the Lord is not for one person. It is for all people. It is not for one nation, but it is for all nations. It is not for one continent, but it is for all continents. Praise the Lord. And this one tells us that God desires praises from all people. And God is, enlight is enlightened in it when all people get on into praising the Lord. He is delighted in that. And he desires that all people will praise him and will ex extol him. So the Lord is magnified among the nations and is to be magnified among the nations. This one calls us as nations and as people of God that we need to honor the supremacy of God and the sovereignty of God in our lives. Is the Lord who is our creator? Is the Lord who is our king? Is the Lord who is our savior? And as the Lord who is able to do great and mighty things in us. The Lord is to be magnified among the nations. 
Whether you are in Asia, you are called upon to praise the Lord. Whether you are in Africa, you are called upon to praise the Lord. Whether you are in Europe, you are called upon to praise the Lord. Whether you are in America, you have an opportunity to praise the Lord. In Australia, wherever you are in this world, you have an opportunity to praise the Lord. And when you do it, you will see God doing amazing things in your life. It is the Lord who deserves our praises. And it is the Lord whom we are called to praise him alone and alone. The word of God continues to tell us, extol him. What does it mean to extol? It means to applaud. It means to celebrate. It is, means to declare. It means to worship. And this is all directed to the Lord who is our God. This psalm calls us to the attention of praising the Lord no matter what. A time like this, even when we know things are not going right, we have a reason to praise the Lord. And we are called to that reason, to that mission of praising the Lord. And verse 2 tells us why. Why should we praise the Lord? Two reasons. Number one, it's because of the greatness of the love of God. And number two, it's because of the faithfulness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord and the greatness of his love is unto all nations. Is unto all people. The Bible tells us in John 3.16 For so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have, his, uh, but have everlasting life. And because God loved the world it is because of this love that we are celebrating him we are praising him we are glorifying him we are celebrating him. Through the love of God, we have redemption of sins. Through the love of God, we have the forgiveness of sins. It is through the love of God that we can enjoy the riches of his grace. It is through the love of God that we have wisdom and we have understanding of what the will of God is for us. It's all because of his great love towards us. There is a reason for us to praise him. And this one towards us, it is all inclusive. It is including everybody. That's why we say it is not, these praises are not for one person. It is for all the nations or, or all the people of all the nations. Praising the Lord. And there is a big secret in praising the Lord. Great love and great power in praising the Lord. And because his love is for all people of all the world, then all the people of all the world ought to praise him. All nations and all peoples. Regardless of tribe, regardless of race, regardless of culture, regardless of wherever you are, you are called upon to praise the Lord. And when you think of the great love that God has loved you and has expressed to you, then what else can you do other than praising the Lord? While you are still a sinner, he loved you and he saved you. While you are nobody, he made you somebody. While you are in darkness, he redeemed you from that darkness and he brought you into light. Then you ought to praise him. You ought to glorify him. 
you ought to celebrate him and to worship him. Reason number two, it is because of the faithfulness. And we are told that this faithfulness endures forever. In summary, it is that God is faithful. The Bible tells us, let all men be faithless, but God remains to be faithful. No matter what happens, we cannot discredit him. And he cannot be discredited by circumstances, by situations, by the experiences that we go through. God remains to be faithful. And his faithfulness is from generation to generation. In this case, we are recounting the covenant that he made uh, with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And this covenant runs through the generations of life. And we are partakers of that covenant, that promise that he made. And God has remained to be faithful. He is faithful to his word. The Bible tells us that his word is forever settled in heaven. And so it means that God sticks to his word. And he has given us his word. We have his word. We can read it in the Bible. It is encouraged each one of us that we should embrace, we should love the word of God because God is faithful to it. And being faithful, it means that God honors his word. He honors. What God has said, he will stick to it until it is done. God is faithful to his promises. He does not change his mind. And we cannot manipulate him. Even with our prayers, we cannot manipulate God to change his mind. What God has promised, then God will fulfill it. He is faithful. And this faithfulness of God endures forever. And God is faithful to his covenant. The Bible tells us that his covenant cannot be broken. By anything or by anybody. And so God will remain faithful to his covenant until it is done in our lives. And because, of, because God is faithful to his word, God is faithful to his promises, and God is faithful to his covenant, then we ought to praise him and to extol him. And his praises are supposed to remain in us. Forever. Because he's faithful in our faithfulness, we praise him. Because he's faithful in our faithfulness, we glorify him. Being faithful to his word, to his promises, and to his covenant to us, then we are supposed to be faithful even in praising him and in glorifying him. God is the object of our praises. And we are the subject of his praises. All nations and all peoples. So we raise our praises unto him. And this remains to be the great mission that we have today. And from this preaching... It is good we understand that we have a mission and this mission is praising the Lord. And so, each and every opportunity that has been presented to us, we need to seize that opportunity, we need to take that chance and to praise the Lord. Praising the Lord includes worshipping Him, giving thanks to Him. Because of his great love and because of his faithfulness. And going through the word of God, you get to know what is the will of God. You get to know what are the promises of God to your life. And you get to know what covenant God has established 
concerning your life. Then you embrace all this and you continue in praising the Lord until it is done in your life. And because God is faithful, then we can hold him to his word. We can hold him to his promises. And we can hold him to his covenants. He will not break them until it is done. And so, our duty is to know what is the word of God for our lives. What has God promised for our lives? What is the covenant of God concerning our lives? Then we take hold of it and in it we continue to praise the Lord. And in praising the Lord, then God moves in, comes and dwells in those praises. And he will remain faithful until his word is done in us, his promises are fulfilled in us, and his covenant is sealed in us. Wherever you are, and whoever you are, Embrace the attitude of praising the Lord. Open your day with praises to the Lord. In the course of the day, continue praising the Lord. And even, even in the evening, praise the Lord. When things are good, when things are bad, God loves you and his love is great for you. When issues and situations betray you, you need to know that God loves you and is faithful. And you will remain to be faithful. When you face challenges in life, you need to know this truth. That God loves you in a great way. And he is faithful. And whatever he has determined to do in your life, he will do it. When there are cries all over us, lack of job, marriages are breaking, financial cries, the economy is not doing as well as it's supposed to be, we need to be reminded of this. That still, God's love is great for us. And he is faithful. And in his faithfulness, that which he has established in his word, in his promises and in his covenants, he will do it. So instead of crying and instead of um, uh, 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 complaining, you have a good mission and that mission is praising the Lord. In every situation, in every circumstance, let there be praises in your mouth. Let there be praises in your heart. Let there be praises in your soul. You sing a song to the Lord. And out of this, you will see the love of God and you will see the faithfulness of God being manifested in you. The word of God today is reminding us that we have a God who loves us. And we have a God who is faithful. And because of those two attributes of God, then we are called upon to praise him, to glorify him, and to celebrate him. And because it doesn't end here. His love is great. His faithfulness endures forever. We can be assured that even tomorrow, God will love us. And even tomorrow, God will remain to be faithful. We can be assured that even next week, God will love us. And God will remain to be faithful. We can be assured that even this is on. 
God will continue to show his love unto us. And he will continue to be faithful. We can rest assured that even next year and in the years to come, God will continue to love us and his faithfulness will be upon us. And so the challenge is upon us. As the Lord loves us, do we love him? As the Lord is faithful to us, are we faithful to him? Faithful in what we are supposed to do. To praise him, to glorify him, to serve him, to honor him, and to be committed to him. When you get yourself committed to praising the Lord, then he continues in his commitment in loving you and in being faithful to you. I submit this challenge to us. All nations and all peoples. Let's embrace this mission of praising the Lord day in, day out. And we will continue to see the great love of God in us and his faithfulness in us. Let's bow down for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your love upon us and for your faithfulness upon us. Thank you, Lord, because we're faithful to your word. You're faithful to your promises and you're faithful to your covenants. From everlasting to everlasting, peace will not be broken. You are committed to fulfill them in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will help us that as you've loved us, we will love you back. As you're faithful to us, we will remain faithful to you. In praising you, Lord, and in extolling you, in celebrating you, and in worshiping you. And I pray that you will bless us, that we will, com uh, we will remain committed to you, and to that which, Lord, we are supposed to do in this life. To the glory and to the honor of your name. We bless you, Lord. That this word has called us from wherever we are. All nations and all peoples. We will praise you. We will give you glory and we will give you honor. And I pray that nothing and nothing will make us not to praise you. In all situations, Father, I pray that we will learn to find a reason to praise you and to honor you. Because you love us and because you're faithful to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you there, you are watching us. You've not given your life to Christ. You need to acknowledge the love of God unto you and the faithfulness of God. And this is through believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior for you. And so you're making that decision. I invite you to pray this prayer after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I pray you save me and you deliver me from wickedness. I pray, Lord, you wrap my name from the book of wickedness and you write it in the book of life. And I pray that your spirit will lead me to live a righteous life. 
And I pray that your love and your faithfulness will be established in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've made that prayer, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. At the bottom of your screen, there's a number that you can call for prayer and counseling. If you do that, then we will be happy to guide you further and you will be blessed. The rest of us, thank you for joining us in this service. I pray that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you. The Lord will be gracious to you. The Lord will turn his face towards you. The Lord will show his mercy and favor to you. The Lord will give you peace, protection, and provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you.